Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Actually, if this is your first time here, thanks for stopping by. Uh, great news. You came for a very special episode. Not like those old sitcoms. Old sitcoms, they said special episode. It was going to be something life or death. There was going to be no comedy. It was going to be way too serious for the show. But today we have a very special episode. What's so special about it? Hackershore Oktoberfest. We're doing a quick cruise of the bottle here. We could see Oktoberfest Marzen um, since 1417 through today. Hackershore is considered the special beer for the heavenly day-to-day -day moments. We call it heaven in Bavaria. You call it Hackershore. For sure. <laughs> I added the for sure. That's not in there. So we could tell here it's been bottled. March 21st, which is perfect timing, end of March. What makes this a, a special beer? Well, well, I think all Oktoberfest beers are special, mostly because they're traditional recipes. So this is a, a couple hundred years old, this recipe. There's only six breweries that are allowed to serve at Oktoberfest. Hackershore is one of them. Uh, I think they're actually owned by uh, Polaner now, which is good. Uh, Planner's a great beer. We're going to cover that one also, but uh, obviously not today. Today it's all about the shore. Hacker shore. So 5.8% uh, alcohol. So we got a, a pretty good beer here. Let's get it open. You get a little bit of that yeast smell right away. A lot of... Almost like a, like dough rising. It's very, very sweet smelling. It's, uh, it's good. Now, uh, Hackershore has a exclusive strain of yeast that they use that's centuries old. So that gives them a little bit different flavor than some of the other Munich beers. Um, we picked up this glass uh, last year, or maybe it was the year before um, at Oktoberfest. Uh, I'm not going to use it. I just, I, I just really like this whole experience is just uh, so reminiscent of a perfect fall, right? So you see the pumpkins. You see the beers, Oktoberfest. Um, so we're gonna use this guy here. It's a, uh, a pint glass with the German flag and the eagle on there. And we're going to pour our beer in the side here. Give it a check a little bit more. So you can see there, it's very caramel colored. It's like a, a 10 on the EBC scale. Smells outstanding. Now, one of the things that you can do with Hackershire with the wheat beers, I'm gonna to try to do it with this one. Hopefully it's the same. You can see there's a little uh, ridge there on the bottle. It's about a uh, fingers wide. Just take this and give it a swirl and it gets uh, a bloom out of the yeast. Yep, and then right in. Look at that. It's very crisp. It's got a nice malted aroma. It's, it's a little tangy. It has a smooth bitterness to it, which is really exciting. This is a very, very good beer. Mm. This is taking me back to uh, the times in the, the Hackershore tent with 3,500 to 4,000 of our closest friends standing on the benches, singing, drinking, clacking the moss, the, the leader beer mugs, and uh, listening to the music that comes out of a, a revolving uh, bandstand in the center of their tent. So it's a very, very popular tent. It's a big party in Munich, especially at the Hackershore tent. Once this COVID thing gets the heck out of the way, I recommend you go and definitely uh, reserve space in the Hackershore beer tent. Yeah, uh, we're gonna need a moment with this. Some, somebody bring me a pretzel or a schnitzel. This is, uh, this is a, a German Oktoberfest beer done extremely well. It is a very toasty caramel type. This, uh, you have this passing around, you're gonna have some brand new friends, I can tell you that. I understand why they call it Heaven of Bavaria. 
just good. Just makes you want to relax and take a moment and really think about um, what else you would want to do. Maybe open another one. A little honey colored piece of history here, right? This is a Munich throwback, you know, hundreds of years old recipe that they do every year for their visitors. I think um, like over, over 7 million liters of beer are poured at Oktoberfest every year. I would assume that a large percentage of, are these for sure. So the bitterness is like a 28 on the, a 28 on the EBU scale. So if you're into brewing and, and getting into craft beers and stuff, you kind of understand what that means. It's, a, it's on the lower side, but it's a smooth bitterness. It definitely does not have that, that bitter bite. You know, there's not hops forward. It's very, very, very smooth. And uh, as a part of a special treat today, we're going to rewind the clock and uh, let you see our review from last year. So we did, uh, we did this beer last year, did it again this year. Let's see how they, uh, how they square up. Is it the same that I like it as much last year? Is it better this year? Or maybe it's just perfect to enjoy, to subscribe to the channel, to share the beer and this video with friends. Prost. Enjoy a buzz with your cuz, especially if you are of legal drinking age, wherever you are watching this video. Our friends in Germany, that would be 16. America 21. You might want to consider that in your, uh, your living plans. But again, smooth beer. Let's, uh, let's rewind. Let's see what this thing looked like last year. Hey everyone, today we're going to cover off on another beer. I'm still thinking about Oktoberfest and I said there were six original breweries that were allowed to serve their product at Oktoberfest in, in Munich. And this is one of them. This is Hackershore. This is their Amber Merzen. You can see it down there uh, because it has those two little dots over the A. Um, it's not Marzen, it's Merzen. And that really means March. So this was brewed to the German purity laws of 1516. And in, back in those times, it was actually illegal for them to, look at how beautiful that is. Nice honey caramel color. It was illegal for them to brew beer in the summer because the boiling was a fire hazard. So they put guardrails up around when you could actually brew beer. And it was September 29th to um, April 20th. There is no summer brewing. So what um, the Germans, the problem solvers they are, did was they upped the gravity and the alcohol content of these guys so that they would last longer. And that's how they got the Oktoberfest beers. These were brewed specifically for festivals. We covered off uh, last time what Oktoberfest is all about. Um, and this is uh, one of the very, very fine um, beers that are available there. Huge beer tents. It looks really good. Oh, that is good. Very, very balanced. No bitter aftertaste, smooth. Um, just a, a very, very refreshing drink, even on a cold day. This is uh, something that I would definitely recommend. So this is 5.8% alcohol. So it's a little bit higher than, you know, your regular, um, you know, beers. Not quite at an IPA, but you're also not dealing with um, a substantial amount of bitterness, which is always nice. So uh, anyway, there you have it. Uh, we're drinking great beer. Brewery is over 600 years old. This recipe is over 500 years old. They must be doing something right. Um, I would say if you see this on the shelf, grab it. Uh, obviously it's limited. It comes out once per year and uh, you know, local stock may vary. Anyway, enjoy. Until next time, we'll get a catch of buzz with you cuz. <laughs> So now that you've seen both, we just again want to say Prost, which is a, a German cheers. Uh, Gail Shore would be very, very proud that his brewery is still producing a top-notch product. He's putting out amazing beers for over 600 years. 
Here's to 600 more. You deserve it. Gail Shore would be really, really excited and impressed to share this. If he only knew that his face was on more than on the glass, the Hackershore glass, you could find it there, um, but those glasses were all stuck in our face. <laughs>